I've decoded the lock that was designed to be undecodable, pick proof. And so I've won the Polish Combination Lock Worldwide Challenge. <laughs> this is the correct combination set here, 17, 8, 12, 9, 2. And as you can see, the knob here turns all the way to about 20 past. If the wrong combination is set, I just change it by one number. You can see the knob only turns to about 10 past. But if it's the correct combination, you can see it turns all the way here to about 20 past. And what it's doing is it's pulling the actuator bar inside into slots in the inner wheels and those are the true gates. Here is a graphic showing the actuator bar and one of the inner wheels. You see it's got a deep true gate and also false gates on every single other position. But there are five wheels. If the actuator bar hits a false gate it can't go down and the front knob can only rotate to about 10 past trying to pull the bar down. But the false gate is blocking the bar. But if the true gates are lined up and the bar can be pulled down by turning the knob to about 20 past, then the locking bolt is free to be pulled out of the shackle. I've turned this front knob to 20 past. Now I'm free to move this whole wheel pack to the right. And that's pulling the locking bar out of the shackle. And the shackle can be completely removed like this. You can see the locking bar coming in and out like this and that goes into the shackle bit here and locks it in. Okay, before I dismantle the lock I'll explain how I decoded it. Well, like I said, when the front knob is turned the actuator bar is pulled down onto five inner wheels and if the wrong combination is entered then the bar will hit the false gates on each wheel. But just like in pin tumble locks, where one pin will bind first due to slight deviations in manufacturing, the bar here will hit one wheel first due to very slight deviations. If that wheel is then moved to a true gate, the bar can be pulled just that little bit further and we can pull the bar down by turning the front knob and that knob should turn slightly more when the binding wheel is moved to get that true gate into the correct position. The actuator bar will then drop ever so slightly and hit the next binding wheel. The only problem is, as Potty314 pointed out, we can't feel the binding wheel. Well, not on this plastic lock anyway. We just can't feel any more or less resistance when it comes to the actuator bar, whether it's over the true gate or a false gate. But as I said, the actuator bar should drop a little bit on the true gate and bind the next wheel, even if we can't feel it. And the front knob should in turn turn around just that little bit further, even though we wouldn't be able to notice it. Now if I could magnify that slight turn, then I'd be in business. And that's exactly what I did. What I did to magnify that slight turn was to tape a laser to the front knob so the laser would shine on a wall. And if the knob turned a little more and the laser projected the angle at a long enough distance, the laser would drop down by a noticeable amount. Just like when you play pool or snooker or billiards, a slight angle difference means that when the ball gets to the other end of the table, it's quite a distance away from where you meant to hit it. I secured the lock gently in a vise with padding to make sure that it wouldn't be damaged but also so it wouldn't move. The laser is taped only to the front knob and not the wheels. Now I don't know which is the binding wheel and one way is to test each number on wheel 1 to see if there is any laser dip and then do the same on wheel 2 and so on. This would take a while to do but what I realised I can do I can move the whole wheel pack from 1s to 2s to 3s, testing each one, because then I can just test 20 positions, and if there's a dip, then I'll know there's a true gate on that number. I still wouldn't know which wheel has that gate at that number, but that would be easy to figure out by moving 
one wheel at a time to the next number and see when the dip disappears. Easier said than done. Here you can see how I went through all 20 numbers four times. It wasn't immediately obvious where the proper dip was. Part of the reason is the false gates might be at slightly different depths due to manufacturing variations and partly also is that I was using a slightly different tension each time I turned the front knob. But averaging meant that I liked the look of 2 and 20. I tested 2 and 20 back and forth and settled on 2. Then I moved wheels away from 2 until I was left with just one wheel on 2 that still showed the dip. Any other wheel wouldn't show the dip on the number 2. That wheel was the one closest to the front knob or the fifth number in the combination. Now I could keep wheel 5 on 2 and do the same measurements on the other four wheels and wheel 5 would no longer interfere because it only had an air gap. Instead of me going through all the numbers and averaging like I was meant to, I got excited and grabbed the first number that looked like it had a good dip and that was number 5 on wheel 2. That later proved to be wrong but I didn't know and I kept going and Besides, I knew I could do it properly later if this fast method didn't work. Wheels 3 and 4 were pretty obvious, even though wheel 2 was wrong, and so that was a bit lucky. Then I found wheels 1 and 2 weren't obvious, and I had to go back and forth a couple of times before I got there. But got there I did. I was encouraged with each correct number as I could see the laser dropping on the wall. Credit goes to Pryor, who was the previous contestant. He pointed me in the right direction with this method. Now let's dismantle this lock. Now you can see the, this is the locking bar. And you can see it going in and out. And that's when I turn the wheel pack, whoops. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I turn the front knob, you can see this goes up and down. Okay, so this is up the top and it goes down and then this locking bar can be pulled out of the shackle. When the front knob isn't down to that 20 pass position, it, the locking bar can't be retracted. I can't. Uh, what if I change this combination? No. Okay. So I'm going to pull this out and let's have a look at that again. It goes whoops up and down. All this is 3D printed stuff. Okay, can pull this out. And this is a locking nut on the central axle. Okay, and the central axle can be pulled out. And here we have the, okay, these are the outside wheels. I'll just put them on this axle for now. And I'm going to pull the inside wheels out and there's nothing else left. Okay, what I wanted to show you. Okay, so you can see here that the locking bar goes in the, can drop into the true gate, but if we have like one number wrong, it doesn't drop in. If it's set to a random combination that we don't know, I don't know, then let's see, when the locking bar drops down, it looks flat, 
but it's going to hit one wheel before the others and if that wheel can be moved to say it's this wheel and if that wheel could be moved to a true gate then the locking bar will drop down and hit the next wheel ever so slightly. So what do I think of this lock designed by Zbigniew Olejnik? Well obviously the claim that this lock is 100% pick proof is not true. Well not true yet anyway. It needs some tweaking to the design so that it no longer has this vulnerability. And Spignev is talking about making the false gates have random depths within a range so that when a binding wheel is moved to the next number it might be a completely different wheel that's binding next. So binding would jump from wheel to wheel every time you moved a, a number and that would make things more confusing to decode but it would still be possible to decode it in my opinion. So I think it would require some additional tweaks. I really do think Zbigniew will design a decode proof lock because he's very passionate about making a lock that's really secure. He said something I hadn't thought of before. With any new type of lock that comes along with a fancy key and other fancy bits like magnets and extra pins or curves or warding or whatever to make it secure, it's only secure until someone makes the right tool because those key locks have an opening to be attacked and the key simulated. With a truly secure combination lock, there's no keyhole to attack and so the only real hope of a truly secure lock is a really good combination lock. The thing is, instead of mechanical locks, I believe digital locks are the future. When they're done properly, that is. They have so many advantages, like slowing down allowed combination guesses after three wrong attempts, and cheap master access for officials, things like that. But mechanical locks will be around for a while because people don't trust digital locks. And also, sometimes it's not appropriate to have a digital lock. But I really do like this lock. My only other reservation is that if Zbigniew really does make a secure 100% pick proof lock then some countries will see this as a threat to their national security as some countries like to be able to have their authorities to have the ability to break into anything. I'll provide a link to the Polish Combination Lock webpage and there you can read about the lock and Zbigniew's passion to make a secure lock. He has a donation section on his page for those of you who want to help him make his dream a reality. Lastly, I'd like to thank Spignev for inviting me to participate in this worldwide challenge. Cheers.